We love gravel and I'm sure you all do at home too, but if you are coming across to the rough stuff from the road, it can feel like a totally different kettle of fish at times. And I've got plenty of examples of being less than proficient headed off road. Why are you shaking? Fear. <laughs> Alto's had a crash. I'm down, hang. Sadly. So today I've caught up with an expert on all things dirt related to get some tips and tricks to get you started and up to speed quick. Let's dive in. Ollie Beckinsale was a pro for 16 years across road, cyclocross, mountain bike and cross country. A three-time Olympian and 17-time national champion, he's now a coach, so he's perfectly placed to talk us through some of the main basics to up your gravel riding game. Let's talk speed now, Ollie, because it is a bit of a different feeling heading off-road compared to the tarmac. 100%. I mean, on a road bike, the grip, and that's the big thing on gravel, it's the, the amount or the lack of grip that you can have. So on a road bike, it's very black and white. You've either got really good solid grip or there's nothing at all. And that nothing at all feeling, which is rare, is super scary um, on road. Off road, you've got this massive gray area where the bike will be moving around, but it's cool. There will be good sort of loose patches, but it will come back to a hard patch. The tires will find themselves, but it does take a lot of getting used to to get comfortable and embrace that kind of middle area. Um, so I think that's probably the key difference. So how would you advise someone to get used to that? I would start off on pretty simple gravel terrain like this path that we're on now. Don't start heading off on mountain bike stuff. You know, you'll find the limit of the bike very quickly. Once you start getting on anything rocky, rooty, muddy, you really need to be kind of on your A game. So I'd start off on bike path, gravel path, simple stuff, forest roads, and just kind of getting used to that, the bike moving around and shifting underneath you, and that feeling of when to brake, when to back off, when to change gear. So on a road bike, you've kind of, you can anticipate, you can see what's coming a long way away. On a road bike, you're gonna to have to be a bit more on it with, with thinking about things as you go. Okay, well, that's good to know, because I think that's where I kind of came a cropper, because once I got a gravel bike, I was just heading off into the woods and go and do lally. So, yeah. With a load of people as well that <laughs> want to push your limits, I think so. Yeah. Okay, let's talk cornering now, because on a road bike, I think my first port of call would just be slamming my outside leg in, leaning in and just gunning for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do the same on a corner like this? So it goes back to that bit we were talking about previously, it's the loose surface. Okay, so on a road bike, unless it's peeing with rain, you've got pretty good grip. But when you're riding a road bike, generally you want to, the key points are braking before the turn. And that's what we wanted to do 100% on a gravel bike. If we break in the turn on a gravel bike, there's a really good chance the wheels are gonna lock up and slide. Okay. So most important thing is get your speed set before you start to turn in. So it goes back, first of all, anticipation. In. So it's thinking, well, what's the surface like? How steep is the corner? What's the runoff like? You're really trying to get as much knowledge before the corner as you can. And then it's sorting out your speed, that's the key. A lot of people break, they don't break enough coming into the corner, they break in it. So what we need to do is almost draw a line across the corner in our brain and you've got to get all your speed set before that line. And then you go. So the key is, is go really hard on the brakes coming in if you need to. And then on the way through the corner, really no brakes or very little brakes really. And what am I doing with my body in the corner? Am I still kind of leaning into it or am I more leaning the bike and trying to keep the body upright? I'd really think about that outside foot. So outside foot down and we want to be really pushing as much of our body weight as possible through the outside okay. foot and that heel. The front foot should be super light. Yeah. I want to get as much, well, a reasonable amount of weight. I don't want to feel like I've got too much weight on the hands because that's on the front wheel. That one's for turning. I want to get most of my weight slammed on that outside foot. So looking around the corner, and I was, when you're starting to do more cornering and getting used to it on the gravel bike, exaggerate the head movement. So if I'm really looking around the corner, the head goes, the shoulders go naturally, then the hips start to go. So I'm encouraging that motion around the corner. Okay. So look for the exit. So if I go right back, hard on the brakes, get the speed sorted before you start to turn, hard through the outside foot, and really exaggerate looking for the exit. Okay, nice one. I'll use that next time I drop Hank in the corners. <laughs> Easy.
Okay, Ollie, we've just come down quite a rocky gradual descent, which yep. you could take at speed. It's the sort of thing that freaks me out slightly. <laughs> yeah. How do you approach something like that? So the key is with this one, like I said, the technicality has just gone up a notch. So once we start to get a rougher surface or, or steeper, first thing I do is you just want to get your backside out the saddle. So okay. before we were just going along, just chilling, we were sat there doing nothing basically. So you want to just float off road, kind of, we could want to call it an attack position. So a couple of inches off the saddle, think about pushing your weight through your heels a bit and just keeping the hands a little lighter. What we want to do is almost have that position where we can move and adapt for the trail. Yeah, okay. As it starts to get a bit steeper, just think about, it's not so much moving your body weight back, you want to think about keeping your hips over the bottom bracket, centre of the crank. So as the bike starts to drop, you can just move yourself back and yeah. it's keeping that set, your body weight central on the bike and keeping it low, that's the key. But the most important thing, just float off the saddle, wait through the heels, and then you're in a position where actually if the trail gets a bit rockier or gets steeper again, you can move around the bike. Okay, that's good to know. It gives me a bit more confidence taking on something like this. I think on the road bike, I'd have my weight right on the handlebars. Yep. Which I think you were saying is a bit risky. Yeah, so think about if it gets technical, always think heavy heels. That's okay. the key. Just think about really pushing your feet into the floor. That moves all that mass low and central, which is where we want it. On a road bike, where we're thinking a lot about getting lower in aerodynamics, a lot of the time the handlebars are very low. A lot of that body weight's on the hands. The downside with that off road, if the front wheel deviates for some reason, big slippy rock, front wheel goes a bit, if our weight's on it, we're going with it. If you've got less weight on your hands, you've got more chance of being able to manhandle or pull the bike back onto, onto the track. So when you drop in, just really think, float over the saddle, heavy heels, light hands. Perfect, okay, nice one. I'm gonna give it a few more tries and uh, keep practicing. Let's go again. Yeah. What about climbing now, Ollie? Because I think on the road, it's just a question of having the strength to get up the climb, but I get the impression it's a bit different on the ground, a bit more skill involved. Yeah, it needs to be a bit more delicate and think about things a little bit more. That kind of pretty much sums up gravel in general, really. So on the road, you can be really physical and just like you say, use your power and hoof up it. Generally, you've got really good traction unless it's cobbles or wet or something. Off-road, the surface is normally going to be loose. I mean, especially on a climb like this, we've got roots, we've got rocks. So a few things. First of all, just try and pick your line. So try and avoid the looser section or the slippier section is probably option number one. What you're going to find as well is you want to keep probably more your weight on the saddle. So most of the time off road, especially on a looser surface, you're going to have to stay seated. Another thing that can help is the front wheel. If we stay seated on a steep climb, the front wheel can lift. So what we can do to help that is think about pulling the elbows down towards your knees. Okay. Does two things, move some bit body weight onto the front wheel and also just engages the core a bit. So there's a bit more power and a bit more stability on the bike. The other thing we might be able to do as well is just drop the cadence a touch. Okay. So if the surface is loose, maybe thinking of climbing maybe one gear harder on a road bike. And this is just for the loose stuff. So maybe 70 to 80 RPM, whereas on a road we're probably aiming more for 80 or 90. Okay. Just gives us a bit more torque and a bit more traction. That's where I've been going wrong then, I think, a little bit. Possibly. Okay, that's good tips. Well, I'm going to give it a few more, a few more attempts up the climb. Um, try not to walk, which is that's what the tends key. To it's all about gravel. It's staying on the bike. If we can stay on the bike, there you go. Days. Thanks, thanks, Ollie. Perfect tips. Right, I'll follow your lead. Right, we're off. So there you go. A few tips to help you get started on gravel coming across from the road. Let us know in the comment section below what you found most difficult about transferring over to the rough stuff and big thanks to Ollie for sharing your expertise it's Not been a uh, it's been super valuable and personally I've learned quite a lot as well Good which man. I'm hoping to take forward into our ride now we're going to head off into the woods and uh, have a bit of fun because at the end of the day that's what gravel is all about as well isn't it that's the thing nice one thanks for watching everyone see you in the next video